It is a dark and mysterious place, full of ancient relics and dangerous elixirs. That's right, your kitchen sink. Underneath it, you know what it's like. It's a graveyard of half-empty cleaners. Most of them you don't need. Some of them you probably haven't used for years. So what are the essentials everyone should have under that kitchen sink? This morning we'll take a look at the only cleaners you'll ever need to keep your kitchen, your bathroom, your living spaces spotless. Home and lifestyle expert Laura Delutri is joining us this morning with all of the goods. And we should say, he'll go unnamed, but one of our prop managers actually brought in everything from underneath his sink this morning to illustrate just how much you can accumulate. And it's a it, lot of stuff. It is a mess. Look at that, Erica. And you know how many homes in America look identical to this? 98%? Yes, <laughs> I would say so. But today we're going to change all that with some quick tips. And some quick tips. And, and, and one of the first ones being keep it organized. Yes. This is a perfect way to do it. Yes, I love this cleaning caddy. I, I bought it at Home Depot. Instead of the short stubby ones that the bottles fall out of, you can see all the bottles will stay in here. You only need five cleaners, a cleanser, a disinfectant, a neutral, a glass cleaner, and um, also I'd like to throw in some peroxide. Peroxide. Oh, I actually use peroxide and baking soda sometimes, too. That'll be another segment, though. You've also got here, as we're getting our cleaners together, we're going to tell you about why you need each one of these cleaners. But first, I know you have a number of different tools here. You say this is all we need for cleaning as well, these sponges and toothbrushes. Yes, toothbrushes for the grout, um, also for corners, cracks, and crevices. Microfiber cleaning cloths, they're great because they absorb mm -hmm. um, all the liquids and get rid of the germs. And uh, sponges are great, but you never want to cross-contaminate no, with them. No, we're going to keep those separate. So we'll start off with... You you say a neutral cleanser, ivory dish soap? Yes, it's fantastic, not just for dishes, but just take a couple of drops and put it in a bucket of water because it's safe for all surfaces, mm -hmm. your marble, your granite, your hardwood, your no I wax. Would. A lot of people are using acids or like ammonia and vinegar. It'll deteriorate your finish after time. Okay. Very important to stick with a neutral cleaner that's safe. That we can do. Windex, my mother uses this um, for stains on carpets too. It works. And killing ticks. <laughs> okay. And it's great for glass and mirrors. And what I recommend is that you spray uh, less on the surface. That way you're going to clean less. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of um, times people clean in a circular motion. And then when you look in the sunshine through, you see streaky smears. The goal is to use something like this microfiber because it picks up like not, not only 99% of germs, but, but it doesn't the streak as much. It doesn't streak. And again, clean in horizontal strokes. Okay. That way you get the corners. And this is good for not just glass, but obviously things like window plates, pretty much any anything, any appliances, fixture, microwaves, works. all the things you want to shine up. A disinfectant cleaner. Okay. You really want that in your bathroom. Absolutely. Definitely. And what I recommend is no cross contamination. Don't spray it on your um, you know, on your cleaning cloths. Um, when it comes to cleaning, I recommend something like the Mr. Clean Antibacterial. And you can just, here's my little trick, take a little piece of toilet paper so you don't get that on your cloths and wipe the toilet seat and then you can um, not have to worry about all the germs and bacteria. Right, you don't want to bring so, that from your toilet seat to your bathtub. But that's not a bleach cleaner. That's something separate. You advise having one of those too? Well, right. Um, I do, and I also recommend peroxide for people with allergies or asthma. I can't take a lot of different scents. Like this one has Febreze, which is nice, but you may not want to have any harsh cleaners around. That's a solution. And you can get a bottle, a huge bottle, for probably a dollar. Yeah, it kills germs and bacteria. So this, so then, but when we do need a bleach cleaner, you say sort of like a scrub is a good one. Yeah, to have. this is going to be great for. I like the Ajax with bleach, but what's nice about it? It's going to get rid of the coffee stains, the Kool Aid stains, the kids leave wine, any of those things. Usually, a multi-purpose cleaner won't do it. Another thing about it is, um, it's great for barbecue grills, ovens, all oh. those you know heavy-duty surfaces right. you have to clean. And um, uh, that's why I always recommend having that in there. Well, soap scum a, a in the baked bathroom. On, burned on mess here. Yeah, which... and this is a great tip. It's the um, so many times we burn things in our pots and pans. What do you do? What I recommend is fill the pot with water. Yep. Okay. Take a couple drops of this detergent, a and, detergent and just and let put it, it in there. Boil it on the stove. You Done. cook off the burn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to leave it there, but I like that tip okay. as well. And right, we're, let's dump this out. And, and then we get rid of it. There we go. And it's gone. Looks great. Laura, always good to have you with us. Some great tips. The cleaning supplies, it's already feeling more zen underneath that sink. I can feel it for all of America. <laughs> Laura, thanks.